Alrighty, so now we're on to the point of, let's say you went through, you got your project or your plugin and you submitted it for approval, you waited the necessary amount of time and they finally responded and you're met with an email stating change is needed, then your project or your product name here. Well, I want to give you a kind of a brief overview of some things that you can expect and how to go through and actually read the error list or the uh, changes needed list that they provide for you, which is actually very handy. However, at times it can be extremely frustrating as well. And I'll show you why for this one, which I've had about three different failures to approve just due to simple example content that they weren't very happy about. So it can be quite a frustrating process, but usually once you get it past the initial submission, uh, submitting updates for approval has become a breeze. You really don't, they don't seem to look nearly as in-depth to it, and you can usually just kind of knock out updates pretty quick. So starting from the right, uh, this is not the, which one am I looking at here? Hang on a second. Oh, duh, never mind. I didn't hit the uh, drop down here to view it. So here's, for example, the first one that I received, I think anyways, of my first person shooter template. So here they actually linked two different attachments. So the first one contains the PDF, which shows you what you will see when they respond back with it being failed. So normally they would fill out the results with, you know, pass and all that kind of stuff. But here, as you can see, the U plugin does not contain a marketplace URL, which you really won't have until, I don't remember exactly when you get it. Uh, it might be when you save it, but I can't even save because I have these filled out. So I'm not entirely sure on that. But anyways, so it asks you to fill out your marketplace URL with the correct one. So that is the URL of, if we right click on our .u plugin, that would be this guy right here. So that's just telling you to correct that. And then next up, this one, depending on what type of plugin yours is, you might receive common problems with it. So all assets are complete and function as intended. So I'm not entirely sure why uh, some of these were, because they weren't when I had uh, submitted them. I know this might have been where I submitted an old version by accident, but here it states there are several bugs in the base maps for the plugin that will restart, require a restart of the editor. So I believe this one was the ammo, so I didn't set up any way to resupply ammo by default just for the sake of testing, which there was no need to because that's not what my plugin was reliant or set up for anyways. Then one in particular is that the weapon will not fire after being reloaded. So again, that was related to ammo. This one is correct, so the other is that the weapon will move closer to the player in front of items but not come back. So this is just a list of bugs that I would have to fix before I can go through and resubmit for approval a second time. And thankfully, they even actually linked a GIF that showed kind of what was going on. So if we load this preview, here you can see my left hand IK right now is broken. I reload. The collision worked for a second, but then it put the gun down and it wouldn't bring it back up. So here you can see the collision puts the gun down but it doesn't come back. So it shows you all the information from there. So then once I went through and I fixed those problems and I resubmitted, you could then find more. So this is an example from my door plugin. So if we look at the PDF, which this is what you should pretty much be seeing regularly, everything goes through, you know, everything passes until we get again to the marketplace URL. However, this one is in relation to compilation. So this, this was before uh, I had set up the system that I showed you in the previous videos where we actually constructed a very nice, robust build environment for us to build out our plugins and construct everything for because it shows us the same process that this person who was reviewing my plugin for approval has done. So if we had any errors ourselves, we would see them. So since ours passed, theirs in theory should pass. So that would prevent you from having any of these types of warnings when they go to build your plugin. And then lastly, you have a lot of errors that you will find are very stupid and scratching your head, especially considering what those errors are because you provide example content. This one here was understandable, so I just cited that when I was actually using MakeHuman, which I'm no longer using anymore. But this one was the one that royally pissed me off. 
So the project is unfinished and has multiple quality concerns. And it took me a while to understand exactly what they were referring to. And it turns out a lot of what they were referring to was my example map, which was literally just there as a placeholder. And if I would have known that they were going to give me this big of a hassle on just this, I wouldn't even have bothered to construct an example map. I would have just used a simple box. So the reason this one failed was because there is a seam visible between the doorway and the wall. That's why, literally. And then it has to do with the position of the head, which was intended to be like that because the head was not supposed to be there for the third person, or sorry, for the first person. So that was intentional. So there's going to be a lot of subtle things like that. It ultimately, it kind of comes down to who you get that is reviewing your plugin. So it can either be a, you know, first time submitting, you get it approved, great. Or you could have this another person review it with the exact same thing, and that person might find something that they feel they should fail it for, so they will fail it and generate a list like this for you to go through. Now, the last thing I want to touch on here in relation to this, uh, I have to actually find the email really quick. Alrighty, I was able to find it. So basically, I had received the changes needed, as always, so it gives you the list, and this was for my multiplayer map editor. So this was the redirectors thing that I was talking about earlier in a previous video, where you must right-click on your content folder and choose Fix Up Redirectors. So this is why you always do it before you actually go to Submit, and same thing for any updates. Next up, the spawning actors on the hosting player does not spawn the transform gizmo, and then just a suggestion. So in which case, I already knew that all that stuff was actually working. So I responded with fix all the issues, and then for number 34, I had responded and asked a question in relation to what they uh, have. So for example, where they gave the suggestion, we recommend adding the ability to click on an actor and edit the gizmo, or the transform. So basically the gizmo, where I state that this is already implemented. However, there's little bits of setup required to get everything to work, in which case I link the documentation as seen here and give a brief rundown on how to do so. So if you do have problems like this, you are more than welcome to, or they are, they welcome you to respond to their email with whatever you have to say. So because I went through, whoops, and I respond and I sent this email, they were able to actually go through and respond stating this. So thank you for your patience. We always complete the initial process, you know, the same thing. And then responded with, we were able to confirm why the transform gizmo was not working. So users are, that are adding the trace channel for the first time will require a restart for the editor or those bugs will appear. We approach the plugin again in another blank project and confirm that it is working in order except for a minor issue. We have included the update sheet attached to this. So otherwise, even though that function was working or that feature was working, because they didn't, they weren't able to get it, they, or let me rephrase that, they were able to figure it out and get it good to go again without me having to resubmit the exact same plugin because I already knew it was working. I had tested it and I retested it after I got that email. So that's why I sent a response stating, okay, this feature does work. I just went ahead and let them know and gave them a quick rundown, assuming your feature, if you run into this problem, has any sort of setup. Give them a list of what all you need to do to actually set it up. So this is where it's very helpful to have documentation. So if you can document your plugin so people have some form of reference, that is very helpful for them as well. So then they just responded with the same old, uh, which I'm going to call it the, uh, I guess, what do they even call this? Technical review checklist. So where they just failed it for the last time with uh, the scale on the X axis is inverted and rotating on the Y axis is inverted. And I know why this was, but anyways, that's resolved. So I was able to go through, quickly fix that, resubmit, and then my plugin finally got approved for the marketplace. And it has made it easy to update that plugin to fix any issues or add new features after that. So again, it's the hurdle of getting past the initial submission that can be the discouraging and annoying factor. Because I think for my, you know, my FPS plugin, I think I probably had close to eight, maybe eight failures of submission. And they were, and a lot of them were due to just some of the most frustrating issues, such as that seam, as to why it got, it didn't get approved. So don't let that discourage you. 
uh, you're most likely going to have problems on your first few times doing this. So it's not the end of the world, but it is extremely annoying. So anyways, that is going to wrap up this video. In the next video, I want to briefly cover actually updating your project. So let's so assume or your product. So assuming it has been approved, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can actually go through and submit an update. So go from 1.1 or sorry, 1.0 to something like 1.1. So, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos, such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that is also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.